Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I am one of your hosts, Corey Darian, alongside me, as always, is the PC muscle race himself, Laron Dawkins. What's poppin', everyone? Also joining us in her fancy new headset, Stephanie Klimov. I'm a legit gamer now. Woo. Get real, it, girl. Hashtag Get real it. gamer. Hashtag. Hashtag, how's, it, how's everyone doing? Everybody good? Everybody uh, doing all right? LeBron. Uh, hashtag the... amazing. The Boston Red Sox beat. Oh my goodness. I already forgot. Oh, the oh, Tampa no. Devil Breeze. So, I was like, oh no, I can't know. Um, we're going against the Astros next. That's what I was going to say. So I was psyched that the Red Sox will be moving forward. Well, the Indians aren't beating anybody ever again. So, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, well, the Indians won't even exist after this season, so it's going to be the Cleveland Guardians. There's a lot of uh, Destiny oh memes popping up in the Cleveland area. So, How about you guys? How's your night going? It's great. You know, my kids are being uh, acceptant of their bedtime. No screaming or whining at all. Nobody, in my, nobody in my house is sick at all. <laughs> you know, liar liar i know oh no it's i'm good it's been a it's been a weird week because uh i i turned in my notice at work on last friday and my last day is saturday and it's been kind of it's kind of been like a weird uh, bittersweet week i guess because i don't know it's not that i like dislike my job but like i'm really excited to move on and do something that like i really want to do with my life and uh you know it's i'm I'm excited to start this new job so that's that's what i'm looking forward to so. well i know i've said it before but big congrats thanks yeah i'm uh i'm really excited my i'm gonna be doing social media and web management for a it company and uh some side editing for videos and podcasts and stuff. So basically this, nice. but someone's going to pay yeah. me for it. <laughs> is it, is it nice, isn't it nice when you have a job that you really want to do and is fun? Yeah. Oh, man. That's why I love my IT job. I'm telling you, man. I, I, get, to be, I get to be a nerd. I get to do nerdy stuff. <laughs> I mean, you, you already are a nerd. I think everybody mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. accepts that now. Yep. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna eat my last Rice Krispie treat. Mm. God, you're I always know. eating on the podcast. Well, it's my last one, so it's the only one you're gonna see me eat tonight. Mm. Is there, well, actually, no. I got no. Actually, no. I can save that because I got these sour strips. I'm telling wow. you guys, if you have if you haven't gotten on these yet, y'all got to. You have to. Wow. Sour strips candy. You can find them at Target. The blue raspberry ones. They're the best so far. Are the ones that are actually on the shelves. Hmm. Sour strips target. I'm putting that in. Sour strips. I, I always hear you talking about it. Oh god, these are the sour strips are amazing. Like everybody, I got everybody on Crossroads turned on to them. Well, of course you uh, did. Ed, 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 Ed's on to them. Um, That's because think, uh, Ed is the human garbage <laughs> disposal. He just everything you put in him, he will just eat it, and he'll be like, ah, my. Ed, Ed is Ed is a walking, breathing Kirby. <laughs> My iron stomach will just process this like it's, you know. Right? God. Yeah. I mean, I have the appetite to eat or anything, but I'm telling you, I so much as have like a slice of pizza and not even the worst thing in the world, like just cheese pizza. And then I'll have, I'll be popping Tums and lying <laughs> down with like four or five pillows propped up because of the heartburn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I mean. The, heart, the heartburn game is real when you get older. Oh. It's, I just, I look at pizza and I like gain like 10 pounds <laughs> to be like, oh. it's crazy. Cause like we, we make fun of Ed for eating all this weird stuff all the time. He's not a big guy. Like yeah, he's, he's not, he's, he's not. still small. I'm like, how, <laughs> what's wrong with this human or what's right I'm with telling, this human? Why don't, I'm why didn't telling, I get this? I'm telling you when his actual, when his actual adult puberty kicks in and that metabolism like <laughs> grinds to a halt, that's it's over. It's over. I don't care how much walking you do during the day. It's over. <laughs> I just I don't understand. Like my ass. Like oh, okay. So check this out, right? Because um, I have a personal trainer, 
And um, and really Monday, didn't notice that. <laughs> Monday, Monday, this, Monday, this man whipped my ass um, because. Because uh, because I had the nerve to tell him that I was three pounds overweight over over my actual like goal weight right now. Hmm. So Monday, Monday, we do we basically did one round, but it was basically a mega round: twenty five burpees, fifty TRX squats, fifty push ups, then another then another fifty burpees, another fifty TRX squats, fifty more push ups, and then twenty five more burpees. Hmm. This is why I don't have a personal trainer. I don't like to do that. I don't understand. You know, I, I still question myself. Why am I paying someone money to, to do this to me? I got yep. I got married and had two kids, so I'm good. I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> enjoy. In, in, uh, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to lie. to Like, sometimes I, I do look at myself. And I'm like, man, what did you do? What happened to you? And I'm just like, oh, man. And the thing is, is like back back to the the ed eating the entire world and just like you know wiping his mouth and being like ah, that was delicious i'm gonna wash it down with a nice two liter of mountain dew or something like code red mountain dew yeah like i for like for like a month straight i've skipped lunch because work like i just haven't been able to take breaks at work because we're so busy and i still somehow managed to like not lose any weight or like I don't know. I'm just Well well what I've learned from my trainer is what happens is if you don't if you don't maintain your caloric intake, I what hap- what happens is your body goes into overdrive with, with a fat storage mode and it takes you forever to burn off what you think you should be burning off. I know. But my and point then, then my man- point is My point is I eat like a quarter of what Ed does and he's super small and I'm super large. Yeah. And it's not like I'm like eating donuts for dinner, you know, like a dozen fattening donuts. Speaking of a, uh, <laughs> a Dunkin Donuts, a Dunkin Donuts opened like like not even like 10 minutes driving distance from my place. Mm. Nice. Yeah, it's 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 dangerous. Dunkin Donuts. I don't I th- I, I don't Dunkin'. The last time I think I was at Dunkin' Donuts was when I went, went to PAX a couple years ago. So. Man, it's weird. I, I have a Dunkin' Donuts literally around every block. There are so many up here. Hmm. It's like, I feel bored. No, no I'm just going to go the other way and try the other Dunkin' down the street. Oh, my Oh, oh my God. Like, the chat's animated after I put that call in about who wants to be on the, uh, who wants to be on After Dark. Hmm. Well... Everybody knows what's going to happen when you when you're hosting an after dark show. Uh huh. Hmm. It's going to get real uh, colorful. So, well, I guess I could do this housekeeping if I could find it. Don't worry. That's a good I idea. I know I know what I'm doing. Sometimes, I promise. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So. Anyways, this is the Boss Rush Podcast, a flagship show of the Boss Rush Network, where each and every week we get together with our friends from around the internet to talk about video games, entertainment, and everything we love about it. You can follow us on Twitter at Boss Rush Network or email the show at BossRushNetwork at gmail.com with your questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, or ideas. If you listen on iTunes, give us a five-star review. You can watch us live on twitch.tv slash the Boss Rush Network and on youtube.com slash boss rush network every monday morning and listen to us on your podcast service of choice all right guys what are we what are we doing with our lives are we playing anything fun are we watching anything are we i don't know working out i think we're, I think we're all i think we're all playing the same game i think I, we are <laughs> i mean i i'm pretty sure we are all also playing the same game so I think. Oh, I we're, think, we're all playing, we're all playing Sable. No, I thought we were all playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure. <laughs> ah, that was the other one. <laughs> yeah, just I, I mean I'm I'm prowling around the island, and getting my backpacks and stickers and stuff, you know. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No, but I believe you are correct. I think we're all I think making we're... our way through Metroid Dread. Yeah, Metroid Dread. As Leron, we had to we had a delayed start because Leron. Couldn't counter an <laughs> Emmy. 
No, oh, I'm dead. Well, uh. well, I was well, well, I was doing all right till I realized. Spoiler alert! I was doing all right until I realized the bastard was shooting ice beams at me. Well. And anybody that knows anybody that knows anything about Metroid uh, knows that Samus has Metroid DNA in her system, and and ice is wickedly dangerous to Metroids and as well as her now. I mean, oh, I'm learning. Are you the closest one to being done with the game out of the three of us? I know I'm still. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting very close to beating the game. Like I'm. Like I'm. I'm hoping I can have it beat. Uh, have it beat. Oof. Hmm. Well, I'm. I've. I've already started a small draft of my review for the game because I want to have that up by Friday. So I, my fear is I probably want to have it 100% beat going into Friday morning when I want the when I want the actual uh, review published. But I feel like I. I feel like I'm close enough to make a very well assessment of the game. I've. I've I've unlocked all the biomes. I've seen practically I've seen practically almost all the the regular bosses outside the Emmys. I mean, I don't oh. I'm not one of those people that really thinks you have to finish a game to review it, you know? Like No, I'm, but I'm also I'm also not trying to have someone come at me saying, "Oh, you're phony. You didn't even beat the game. How are you going to talk about it?" I mean, those people just suck. You can just tell them to f off. You know? That's what I do. Although I don't even remember the last time I reviewed a game, so. Oops. So I will say from my end, I have not, believe it or not, ever played a Metroid game ever. Uh, it just didn't happen. Um, but you know, the hype for this was just amazing, and I bought it without hesitation. I pre-ordered it, and you know, I'm probably saying what's already been said in you know the other podcasts within our network, but I think it's incredibly beautiful. I love the cutscenes. It's it, it's smooth like butter. I almost forgot I was playing on a Switch. I was just waiting for it to stutter or something, and I haven't really encountered that yet. It is, it can be wicked hard sometimes, but I don't know. I feel like it's a learning curve for me because this is a true Metroid game, so I can't just be running around not paying attention to where I am on the map and, <laughs> you know, keep an eye for that red dot. So, yeah, I, uh, I mean, if it makes you feel better. Stephanie, I've never. I the only Metro game I've ever played is the original, like okay. for I long. I mean, I've dabbled, I guess you would say, in most of them. But like, I don't like the Metroidvania genre. Like, I just I don't like the backtracking, being confused on where I'm at on the map because I'm dumb and can't follow where I'm at, and like I just. The only ge- the only Metro game I've ever finished is the original one, and the only one I played longer than an hour or so is the original Metroid. And so this was like what I what I said on Nintendo Power Block the last episode of Nintendo Power Block. I said this really has a Dead Cells feeling for me, where like I don't like I don't like procedurally generated roguelikes, but this game has enough in it in terms of the movement and the combat. And uh, I really, actually, really like the map in this game. I think it helps me immensely uh, trying to figure out where I'm at or where I need to go or what, where I've been. I know, like, the waypoint system, Leron, I know we talked about it a little bit. That you Was it you or was it Jacob that said that you missed the waypoint system? I think it was it you. It was me. Yeah. It was me. Uh, and I get that. I think a waypoint system would actually help this game a lot. It would help me a lot. But... Just in terms of the movement and exploration and the combat feels really good and really natural. Uh, and Stephanie, like you said, the game runs so smooth. Even even in handheld mode, it runs at, yeah. I would say, close yeah. to 60. Like, it's just, it's a phenomenal playing game. It's a phenomenal looking game. It's, Ninten- it's Nintendo's best looking game, I think, on the Switch. Huh? I mean, as much as we give credit to, like, Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild, and those games look great, but, like... Metroid Dread is Nintendo's best looking game on the Switch. I will say that hands down. Um, I think the enemy designs are cool. I think the boss encounters are really cool. I really like uh, what's his face when he's chained up and he's like, and Samus is just standing there s- staring at him. <laughs> and then you just shoot. You just Being shoot. Being an absolute the, badass. Yeah, you just shoot the rocket into his mouth. It's like. It's so cool, and the like the animations are so fluid. Even the little details, like when there's a little lip on the step, like going up into a new area, and she like puts her hand down to like climb up, or like when you're 
uh, like when there's like a, a hole in the wall that's a little bit too small for her to get through and she just touches she just touches the wall to like peer into it or whatever and mm-hmm. like like the wall jumps feel good it's just the amount of detail and care that they took with this game like mercury steam I know they've always they've had a hit or miss record for a while right like no that first Lords of Shadow game that they developed was it was kind of split, right? I think most people liked it, but a lot of people just didn't really give it the Castlevania chance, right? Because it just was it seemed like a God of War clone at the time. I know nobody liked the other two Castlevania games they did, and then obviously the last Metroid game they made was a remake, and it was like, well, it was good for what it was, but like they were remaking one of, I would argue, one of the least liked or played Metroid games, right? And it was super linear, and it was on the Game Boy, and they had to build something off the bones of a Game Boy game. So mm-hmm. the fact that they pulled it off and did it this well, it it's shock, it shocked me uh, how much I'm enjoying this game. So uh, I love it. I know, Theron, uh, you've been playing Metroid. You're a big Metroid fan, right? So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure you've spoken to another podcast, but I just, I'm just curious about your just overall take about this compared to the other games and do you think that the trajectory is now changed for Metroid and it's just gonna I I would hope I would hope so but the problem is I uh, you know okay so let me let me let me answer the first part um, as far as how as far as my feelings on this game uh, for the longest time the only uh, the, the major game in the Metroid series that I always had like the biggest affinity for was uh, was Super Metroid for the Super NES. Like it was it was one of those, it was one of those ones that I feel like it set the standard for Metroid. Um, as a matter of fact, when they redid uh, Metroid uh, uh, Metro the original Metroid game for Metroid Zero Mission, uh, it was basically a game that was updated with all the features and availability from um, from what we we had in Super Metroid. So it played like a completely different game, even though it was it was still a, like an old familiar friend. And uh, and and then we had uh, Metroid Fusion, which basically was the seek was the the follow up game to Super Metroid, um, and it still had those same mechanics and conventions and stuff like that. So we were used to that by then. So now we have Metroid Dread because I'm skipping I'm skipping uh, Samus Returns for the uh, for the 3DS because that was also a good game. Uh, but it was it was it was a 2.5D game um, because uh, because of the, just the way like the maps and some of the things were going with that game. So um, but yeah, so we get Metroid Dread and it's basically back to the original formula of a Metroid game. And right now. My honest take on this is like we finally have a contender that's going that's probably going to knock Super Metroid off of a pedestal for me. Yeah, I mean, wow. I've I've heard this a lot where people who love Super Metroid is like this is this is the best Metroid game. This is the best 2D yeah. Metroid game. This is probably the best game in the entire series. You know, it, it's it's gotten a lot of high praise from people. From let's be honest, Nintendo fans are the pickiest fans, right? <laughs> so. The fact that they're saying this and it's getting such universal praise is just, I, I don't know. I always thought Samus was a cool character, even though I didn't care for the games. Right? She's just, you know, a really cool bounty hunter in a cool suit and some, you know, giant orange shoulder pads that you know take out <laughs> whatever. But this, I, I, that's the thing too. Is like the suit design in this game also is like killer. Oh yeah, like this is like the best. This is like the best. Well, well, I think what's, I think what's cool about this is like this is the best version of her suit because like, because like the Metroid Fusion suit, like you know, like that was something different. But we also knew that was something temporary because of like if, if anyone knows anything about the storyline of that, it was something temporary uh, designed for the situation that she was in in that one. Yeah. But this is like the first real refresh to her suit, mm-hmm. and it's and it's incredible. And honestly. Uh, the more I'm playing through the game, the more I'm realizing that this is the this is the base version of her suit because as she gets her updates, her upgrades, and all that stuff, she's gonna wind up looking like the, the traditional Samus, except with a, a little bit sleeker. Yeah, that's. I think I like. That's what I'm. I, I think that's what I like the most is that she's. It looks sleek. The suit looks sleek, and uh-huh. yeah, it's like it's like the change like in the Dark Knight when uh, Batman gets the more agile suit so he can turn his head. Like that's, <laughs> I know, I know, that's a, I know that's a dumb comparison, but like that's what it reminded me of. Of like, this is a cooler, 
sleeker, no. more agile Samus that just looks like she can just tear apart anybody now. Now, one thing I do like about the suit design, and I and I, I swear, like Mercury Steam, like they they're doing some good stuff with Metroid. As a matter of fact, I hope they just I hope they just keep like the the two D side of Metroid and, and let and let uh and let Retro Studio work on the three D stuff for Metroid. Mm-hmm. But one thing I honestly love, as a matter of fact, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at a still of her uh, of her suit. Mm-hmm. Like it's got like nano so like so like uh-huh. it actually shows like like you know like it actually shows like it's supposed to be integrated into her bu- her her. Her body for like, it, it's the, you're talking about body. the blue weaving underneath the shoulder pads and stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. yeah. That, that's I like that touch a lot. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like it's just uh, I'm just you know it's, I'm being a science fiction TV nerd when I when I see stuff like that, but it's it's so it's so freaking cool, you know? Like nerd. they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that. They could they could have just been like, okay, we're just gonna slap like regular like palette colors on her, and you know, boom, that's what it is. But the level of detail they put into that, and you can. And whether it's in a whether it's in an actual uh, cinematic scene or if it's actually live live in game, you can see it. It it's, it stands yep. out. Yeah. Yeah. O- uh, overall, overall presentation is five five out of five stars for me. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, yeah, I this is there's, this, a, there's a there's a small preview of my of my review for oh, anyone. I can't actually, wait to read it. I actually, even call. <laughs> Call dibs on copy editing it. I, I want to read it. For <laughs> All right, I'll tag. I'll tag you specifically for it. I thought about. Yes. I thought about doing a video review for this game. That's how. I'm already working on a video review. <laughs> well, you have your own channel, Iran. Okay. Exactly. Oh. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Can, can we collaborate then? Can Can both of us work on it? Maybe. We'll see. I'll have my. <laughs> I'll have my people call your people. <laughs> I have people now, uh, but in, in all honesty, like this is this is the f- as much as I love the Switch and love a lot of Nintendo games, this is the first uh, Switch game that's really wowed me in a couple of years. You know, it's just it's one of the it's it's just one of the best game, and even if you're not a Metroidvania fan, you should definitely. I think you should definitely at least check it out if you have like a GameFly thing or a Redbox Gamefly or still around. I think yeah, we have friends at show that wow. still use it. Wow. Todd Oxtra from Secret Friends Unite. Shout out to, shout out to them. Great show. Um, Great podcast. There There's something I was gonna say, and then you threw me off with the whole GameFly thing. Sorry, GameFly oh. is still around. I mean, oh, uh, there's still a blockbuster somewhere, right? So. More of a museum. Oh, okay, <laughs> I remember what it was now. Like, like in all my time of owning a Switch, I think there's maybe I think I count on one hand like the number of games that have actually like just wowed me. Uh, Metroid Dread is just the most the most recent one, but um, uh, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, and that mm-hmm. was another one that wowed me as soon as I turned it on. Love um, that game. And, I, and I'm probably going to say Astro Chain. I feel like Platinum Games, like you get. You can give them, you can give them, you can give them a pile of dirt, and they'll turn it into, into a masterpiece. Hmm. I don't know. Somebody gave them Ninja Turtles and turned it into a piece of crap. So, wait, what? What, what Ninja Turtles? Uh, Mutants in Manhattan, dude, for PS4 and Xbox One. That was that was them. Yeah, and I then did, I, I they also they also did a Transformers game and a Legend of Korra game. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know Platinum did all these games. <laughs> yeah, Transformers was okay. It was it was okay, uh, but the Ninja Turtles game was not very good, and I was very mm. disappointed because for people who have been following me for a long time, I love the Ninja Turtles, and anytime a new game comes out, whether it's bad or good, I will play it. And let me tell you, this was not one of the good ones. <laughs> so so. So would you be mad at me if I told you that I'm going to play Metal Slug Tactics before I played uh, the the Turtles remake? No, because I think Metal Slug Tactics looks awesome. <laughs> I'm just joking, by the way. I'm going to get both those games. I mean, Tur- <laughs> Ninja Turtles got delayed to next year, so. Uh, and that's when Slug ta- that's when Slug Tactics. I think comes out I think I year. think Metal Slug Tactics actually comes out before Ninja Turtles now. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that Ninja Turtles game looks great, though. Oh, it looks amazing, but but why April O'Neil as the, as the next character? Why Casey Jones? I know where's Come Casey on. Jones, I, dude. I, wanna, like, that's... I, I just want I just want to beat somebody into submission with a damn hockey stick. <laughs> he 
Yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet Casey Jones will be a playable character. I bet Splinter will be a playable character. I bet they'll start adding characters mm-hmm. as long as they don't add the weird. So I need to. I need to preface this because I can feel. I can feel the comment anger from the internet. But I am not opposed to a female Ninja Turtle, okay? The one that's in the comic run right now, outside of the last Ronin, is very good, right? Uh, it that Like, that run is very good. She's All a right, great so addition look- to the team, but... Because I, I don't I don't read the comics uh, I, like most of my Ninja Turtle knowledge basically is from like from like the the cartoon series the yeah. various different ones yeah uh, is she an actual sister or is she just an outsider she is an outsider she was actually a human who got poisoned and the only way they could heal her or like cure her was to use the ooze and uh-huh. in doing so her uh. They had to give her some sort of blood transfusion, and the only, the only people that were around were the Ninja Turtles. And so, mixing the ooze with turtle DNA turned her into okay. a female turtle. Okay, uh, is she so. a badass though? Oh, she's cool. She can use all of their weapons. Oh my god! Yeah. Would... Wait, did she get transfused from all four of them? No. No, <laughs> but she. No, she. I for I it's been it's been a while since I read that oh, run. Who uh, oh, is she? Splinter's wife? <laughs> uh, hold on, I got I gotta look it up because uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like throw. This is important. Uh, no. I didn't mean to throw us. <laughs> no, her her name is her name is Janika, and she is the female female turtle that. Uh, uh, let's see. Let me. I'm I'm looking it up right now. I forget. I forget all of this. I, I. My point. My point being, while I looked this up, was as long as they don't add Venus De Milo from the weird Next Mutation show that was terrible, mm. that ran for one season. Although they did do a crossover episode with the Power Rangers, and it was pretty awesome. But as long as they don't add her, it'll be okay. This guy. This guy's a nerd. Called me a nerd on the show. I did. <laughs> Look, I'm very into my Ninja Turtles, okay? Uh, Takes one to know one. We're just all nerds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, she she's like a... Uh, this character was like a vigilante, right? And she didn't approve of Splinter's uh, non-violent policies that he was enforcing on the Ninja Turtles uh, unless they had to, right? Like, they were there to defend, not attack at will. And yeah. so... She began to go out and take care of the Foot Clan when the Ninja Turtles wouldn't, because they're not obviously not. They're trying to defend, and when there's no problems, yeah. they're not going to go attack. She gets injured. Uh, she gets injured by the Rat King, and uh, she gets taken in by the Ninja Turtles to heal up, and then she, uh, you know, turns into a, a turtle herself, and she can use all of their weapons. She can. She's just does all kinds of things. She's cool. She's a cool turtle. She wears yellow, by the way. Very cool. Wait, wait. Oh, sweet. You know, I need to look her up. What was her name again? I want to see what she looks like. Janika. J-N-N-J-E-N-N-I-K-A. So. Oh, so she's got a yellow mandana? Yeah. Okay. She's cool looking. Oh, she also has like these weird Wolverine claws too that she uses when she's not using weapons. Oh, I see them. I see them. <laughs> so. Whoa. Cool looking character. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a female. Yeah, you know, it's a female turtle. So, you know, like, that's groundbreaking in my opinion. Yeah. Not the first For female the turtle, but the best female turtle. So. Venus de Milo sucks. Throw that out there. Just look up. Wait, just look she up. She was a former member of the. She was a former member of the Foot Clan. Yeah, she like defected from them. Oh damn! And then when because I think she, I, it's been a while since I read the comic, but I think she it was like betrayed by her squad or whatever, and so she defected mm-hmm. and then started taking them out, and then she got injured. Hmm. So. 
anyways, Metroid Dread is very good. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, Ninja Turtles so I looks saw... great, and <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Tactics looks great. So. Oh yeah. Oh man. Sorry, uh, Stephanie. I didn't mean to uh, cut you off. Oh no! It's I was just kind of throwing something. Like I did something non-gaming, um, kind of expanded my horizons. I went and saw a movie last night. Felt weird to be back in the theaters. Um, I saw the latest 007 movie, Ooh. No Time to Die. Was it good? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I thought it was it, it was pretty good. I didn't go in with high expectations, to be honest with you. But um, I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked the you know the villains in there, and the pacing was okay. Um, and the ending, I didn't expect the ending that much. Um, even I knew it was Daniel Craig's last movie. I just didn't expect it to. I'll just leave it, leave that there. But I, it was very worth the two and a half hours, or however long it was. And the trailers also were great, which normally I'm not like, hey, I love the trailers in the movie I saw. But they showed Dune. They showed the upcoming Ghostbusters reboot. And uh, it return. Uh, it Eternals return not return. I'm confusing it with the game. Oh, the the, Mar the, the Marvel, Marvel Eternals, Eternals. Yeah, Eternals. yeah. I keep saying Returnal. Sorry. Like all those movies were were see, um, shown there. The, the, those trailers. So it was a great time. Cool. I I want to yeah. see. Like every time Double Seven comes out, my dad and I would go see it. But like with COVID and everything, it's like we we haven't been able to so we're like trying to wait and we, we might go see it next week when i'm off but like i don't know it's 007 is always something that my dad and i have bonded over and Aww. we like we were all ready to go see it last april when it was supposed to come out yeah uh, but i'm very i'm very excited to to see this movie it, yeah i'd like to know what you think when you guys see it eventually yeah yeah, I will definitely uh, talk about it when it when it happens. So, uh, anybody else doing anything interesting with their lives besides playing video games? Honestly, that's honestly that's it. Like I've been I've been gaming and just nerd ga gaming and, and writing doing twenty five and, and burpees and hundred push ups and a yeah. thousand sit ups and <laughs> swinging on chandeliers. I don't know what you're doing. All this crazy workout stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Always. Uh, although I don't think he's been working out as much because he wore sleeves today. So I just, you know, he's hiding the <laughs> he's hiding the non defined <laughs> muscles. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Laurent, it's you just... know I had to. This is off. This is an off night. Like all my tank tops need to be washed. <laughs> They're so sweaty from working out. Cut off. Yeah, <laughs> I also need. I also need to update my uh, my tank top and muscle shirt collection because like because because fifty six episodes of Crossroads. Fifty six episodes of Crossroads. Uh, <laughs> so many episodes of Boss Rush Podcast. So many appearances on Pow Block. Pow Block is also the only other time when I wear sleeves too because you know like I gotta I gotta respect the family oriented. Yeah, I got yeah the family friendly content there. You know, can't have can't have soccer moms and and you know all that stuff like catching the vapors and whatnot. You know, like oh, is this what you're watching? You know, and then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, their kids are no longer watching Pal Block because they're watching Pal Block. Hmm. I don't know why I just tried to gas myself up like that. I'm nothing special. Hmm. Well, collection. You said collection. I mean, I, I, I have a... D I have look, a DVDs are a collection, okay? Vinyl is a collection. Amiibo are a collection. Okay, well, okay. These are well, shirts, okay. Laurent. Okay, so <laughs> my can't... wardrobe my wardrobe of tanks and muscle shirts. No, How about next, that? No, next week I want to see, like, you're retiring these three sleeveless shirts, and I want you to shadow box them <laughs> behind you on your wall above your bed. Yes, please do that. <laughs> like, people, like people when they, like, have signed sports memorabilia and they hang it up on their walls and stuff it's just laurent's old old tank or maybe tops. laurent can just set, you know sell these old ones unwashed to maybe some fans and get some revenue that way 
Might not be a bad idea, actually. Yeah, they'll, they'll open the box and be like, ah, scent of Leron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that how people make? Isn't that people? Isn't that how people make voodoo dolls of, of, of people and stuff like that? Like they they get like they get like the the I, I don't know like the essence of somebody. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and creepy. It, I, exactly. Yeah, I'm like. Oh. I understand there's a market for 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 selling like used your know, used clothes, you know, and some people don't even care if it's like slightly used or or, or ran through. <laughs> Corey's got this look on his face now. I'm just, I don't know. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, Laron, if you need help, just blink twice, okay? I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh so what are uh, Leron, we're gonna go your way first what is what is your topic for tonight okay all right all right so actually wait, wait a second because I, I had it written down i had it written down and i um i i didn't commit to memory it's been it's been a busy week for me hmm. um okay oh crap hang on hang on hang on Oh my why gosh! Did I, why did I forget about this? No, no, for real. Like I actually had a topic. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out where. Where's that notebook I had? <laughs> Man, it's a good thing okay, Stephanie's you know here because you know she's she. You know, you're just, Leron. You're disappointing a lot of people tonight. You forgot your topic. You're wearing sleeves. I was playing Metroid delayed the, and delayed show. the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. You, oh, I remember what it was now. Okay. Yeah, um, and, and, it, and it can work. And it can work in the ga- in the realm of gaming as well as movies, TV shows, and things like that. Uh, what is it? What is a, what is a easy way to wind up with franchise fatigue? Um. Uh, wow, that's a that's a good question. Yeah. Now. Now I know this. Like when it comes to like when it comes to like television and movies, you know, just basically an overabundance of like of like every like for example like a, a TV a TV series. Let's let's look at like this like Chicago. We had Chicago Fire on NBC, right? Um, that show ran that show ran for a couple of seasons on its own, and then like one year, all of a sudden there was like three other Chicago shows that just popped up, and they all were intertwined with Chicago Fire. You know, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that show has franchise fatigue or whatnot, but it's one of those ones I can think of where like a show you have one show is so good, all of a sudden it gives birth to like three other or two or three other shows at the same time. You know, um, video games also video games also do it. You know, like uh, I believe there was a very bad like franchise fatigue. Well, there's there's franchise fatigue with uh, for sure for Call of Duty with certain aspects of Call of Duty. Um, Assassin's Creed had very bad franchise fatigue. Yeah, Assassin's Creed like immediately popped off the top of my list there. Yeah, yeah. So like, what's so like in so like just give me some give me some thoughts and opinions on what can what what can ultimately drive things to franchise fatigue because sometimes franchise fatigue is just like a TV show or a movie series is running too damn long. Uh-huh. Like like we've got another Halloween movie coming out what this Friday? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I- yeah. You- no, keep keep going. Oh no, I was just I was I was just saying, you know, like there's there's different there's different ways to wind up franchise fatigue. Sometimes sometimes people will eat up like like 17 trillion iterations of the same TV show, and and, and other parts, you know, like like one of my favorite TV shows, uh, Supernatural, went off last year, 15 seasons. Like I've been watching that show since day one, you know, <laughs> like when it first started, you know, like I wound up with a little bit of franchise fatigue, even though it's still one of my favorite shows to date. Yeah, I think I think when you have uh, I think when something is is really consistent coming out in terms of like maybe consistent is the wrong word, but you know like yearly or bi yearly, and especially in in gaming, right? Like we used to get games in the same franchise every you know twelve to twenty four months, right? Like I remember on Xbox three hundred and sixty, like we would get a new uh halo game like every year right starting with halo 3 and then you got halo 3 odst reach combat evolved uh anniversary halo 4 halo wars all in a span of like five like five years and it's like i get it i like halo a lot but 
I want to, I want to play something else, you know? And like, it was the same with gears, right? Where, uh, gears two and three came out within 18 months of each other. And then 18 months later, uh, gears judgment came out. And I'm like, I get it. I love gears. I played the crap out of gears one. I got that seriously achievement and it was the greatest, one of the highlights of my gaming life at that time. Right. Cause it, it just the way the multiplayer was set up. Uh, it just, that achievement was really difficult to get, but like, man, it's just like every, like, and, and I think that's where people, especially on the, on the Xbox side of things are like Xbox only has these games, right? Like look at, look at Forza, for example, right? That game comes out every year. Yeah. This was like last year was the first year we didn't get a full Forza game since I think Forza Motorsport three. Cause then horizon and motorsport alternated every year. So, uh, but, but we still got the Lego expansion for Forza horizon four last year. So it was still like a major Forza release last year. And it's like, man, this is, this is just like, it's a lot. And I think that when, when games do that, or when, I mean, look at, look at Marvel too, in the, in the Marvel cinematic universe, right? Like it's what, there's no denying what they were able to do with those first 23 movies or whatever was, was historic right historic but like you get a movie every two months three months like it starts to wear on you and like yeah i like when endgame came out like i was excited to go see endgame but i was also excited for it to be like this is the end for a while for me because this is you know i'm just excited for this to be over uh so you haven't caught shang chi yet no, I just watched okay. I just watched Black Widow the other day. Okay. And you know, I think that's a really great point, Corey, because I'm I'm a huge Marvel fan and I got I got all the way to Endgame was psyched and I and I still love Marvel, but I legit had the fatigue where I just couldn't latch on to any of the T V shows. Like I tried a couple episodes and the reason why I didn't keep watching them wasn't because I didn't like the show. There's just I just lost that appetite for it, which since you brought up Shang Chi, like for me, when I first heard that movie was announced, I like went bat shit and like I was so excited, like yeah. yay Asian representation. Like I got like I was telling my mom about it. And mom doesn't care, but I was like, oh no, <laughs> look. But at the same time, believe it or not, and I'm ashamed to say, but I have not seen it yet. And it's not for lack of not being interested in the topic in the actor Simu Liu. I love him. I don't know. I just there's that invisible fatigue that maybe I'm not yeah. as eager to be there on day one to watch it which is unfortunate yeah. but yeah yeah i haven't caught shang chi either and and i'm and i'm shocked because i always catch the marvel movies like when they when they're when they're out and available uh so i'm shocked too and the sad part is is that um it actually sets up for the eternals and so now i have the now i have this thing where i'm like i need to hurry up and watch this because i do want to see eternals right, right. yeah uh, and, uh, oh good sorry good. i i remember watching a marvel movies trailer where they kind of you know displayed all the the next set of movies that'll be coming up uh-huh. so i'm like yeah i do need to get caught up because there's a t- like another spider-man another thor another guardians yep blah 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 so there's more coming <laughs> yeah yeah um another thing i'll say that kind of leads towards franchise fatigue and sometimes and sometimes it's inevitable sometimes like Franchise fatigue can happen when, like, certain actors, like, leave the series, whether they get written out the characters or the actors just quit or, you know, something major happens. Like, people get franchise fatigue because sometimes, sometimes, like, certain characters and certain actors are what's kind of the glue that keeps the audience there and stuff like that, you know. Like, I know for sure, like, uh, like when we talk about Marvel, for example, I, I guarantee you they've, they've, they're probably not going to have a lot of comeback viewers for people who are, like, very – had, like, a lot of affinity for uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark. Like there, uh-huh. you know, there's going to be people who are like, oh, Chris Evans is no longer here. Like, what, what are we going to do? You know, <laughs> you yeah. got yeah. you got one more Thor movie with Chris Hemsworth and then that's it. <laughs> it's, yeah. Lady, no, and, it's, it's Lady Thor after that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, another example of, of that is The Office, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And while I still think the final few seasons were okay like they're fine but i just feel like there was a big turning point when 
you know, Michael Scott left, you know, yeah. that was in like crap season seven, eight. I, I no. Anyway, I can't remember right now, but when he left, I feel like, you know, a good bun, you know, bulk of the fans still watched it, but maybe there was just less enthusiasm or, you know, when people always speak fondly about the show, they speak fondly about during the Michael Scott era era. Yeah. I should say. Yeah, I mean, The Office is definitely, like, and now it's come back around, right? Like, it's it's hit that point where, like, it's been gone for long enough, and now this next generation of people are watching it, and it's like, I also, I also think that the era of binge-watching things maybe has, you know, contributed to the fatigue of certain things, right? Um, I think the way that, like, Netflix kind of drops things or, you know, I don't know. I, I like the way that Disney plus and Apple do it where it's like weekly 10, like 10 or 12 episodes a piece. Like, you know, Netflix, I think Netflix got themselves have, has gotten themselves in trouble with that because net, because when the Netflix originally did it, they did it to get as many subscribers as quickly as possible. Right. Like, and you know, and, but you know, also Netflix said, at the time was the only thing around, right? That, Except for true. maybe like the, the adolescence of Hulu, I guess too. But like Netflix, mm -hmm. Netflix was like the cable killer we're going to subscribe to netflix and we have everything right here that we need and we can watch it all at once or we can you know we can watch a thousand different things within a, d a day and yeah now you have disney plus you have apple you have peacock you have hulu and paramount plus and joe schmo's streaming machine i you know what i mean like there, there's so many different streaming services that like it's like you, you just have cable like yeah, I, well, the problem the problem with Netflix, with, with Netflix though is that is the fact that they back themselves into a terrible corner because what happens is like for example House of Cards is honestly what started this whole thing in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, it, they drop the entire season, people can run on there, binge watch it, do whatever, and you know typically what happens is people would they watch what they want and then they immediately drop their subscription until like the next season or whatever came out what well, like that so netflix netflix the company gets whiplash because they don't know how many true viewers they have they they, they don't know because like you know i feel like sustainability is always the best way for your business model and stuff like that but if you have like if you have like an upswing of like millions of viewers like one week and by and by the next week those same million of viewers are gone because, you know, like they got their fill out of what they wanted, you know, like and heaven forbid, like everybody's like creating like 17 trillion new email addresses just to get seven day trials and stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then here comes then here comes Hulu. Hulu. Hulu picks and chooses, picks and chooses when they want to drop entire seasons or something and when they want to <laughs> do it week by week. And that's cool because they they're playing they're playing this game that basically is like basic it's like it's like it's like you're watching you watching a kid hop over a fence run to the into the neighbor's backyard to sock the other kid in the mouth and then he runs back and hops back over the fence and then you know disney plus shows up hbo max all these stuff they're doing they're doing a traditional week by week formula which is keeping their keeping their viewers locked in and, and disney plus is i feel like is doing it the best because every time every time something i care about goes off Next week, something new starts, and I'm like, "Oh, I got it! I can't, I can't unsubscribe." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I mean, to be fair, I really liked the 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 Disney, like the Disney Plus Marvel and it was Marvel shows, and I really liked the Mandalorian. Like those are those are shows that I'll continue to watch. Like I I thought I was done with Marvel for a while, and to be fair, I think I still kind of am, but like. The only reason why I think I watched WandaVision is because my wife wanted to watch it because my wife grew up watching old sitcoms like that and it really had her interested in watching that because every episode was based on a different era of sitcoms and I was like, okay, well, let's watch it. And then I got invested watching it and it actually en ended up being like one of my favorite Marvel things. Uh, and then obviously Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Leron, you and I have talked about this. Mm. was just like your i mean your standard kind of grounded military like captain america sequel basically right? yeah like i mean it was really good right uh 
but like the the one I was like really hesitant to watch was Loki was Loki and it's like it's weird. Loki was like the one like really the first time I was like Marvel's getting weird. Like this is <laughs> this is going further. Wait, Marvel was, wait, Marvel wasn't weird with with freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I thought I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was weird. I'm one of the few people who like doesn't really care about Guardians of the Galaxy. Like it, I feel like I feel like Guardians One is a better movie than Guardians Two. Oh yeah, a, a thousand percent. Guardians Two is not good at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy Two is good. Um, but I'm also that I'm also that weird guy that thinks there's nothing else. There's nothing wrong with Thor Rag, uh, not Ragnarok. I'm sorry, Thor uh, Dark World. I I've only seen it like one time, so I don't I don't. I know. feel like I feel like Dark World is better than Thor One. I I'm also the weird one of the weird people who actually really likes Iron Man two a lot. So oh, oh, oh you 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 terrible person you. I know. <laughs> I'm horrible. I also really like Captain America: The First Avenger, which apparently nobody likes too. So. Hey, that hey, that was a good movie. It is. Uh, that, that, was, that was a good movie. But then but then again, you know, like just like how just like how like like the male population is in love with uh, Ryan Reynolds. Like I'm in love with Chris Evans. So, you know, I, I've seen damn near every, even his flops. I've seen, I've seen his movies. Knives Out. <laughs> Knives Out. Have you seen Knives Out? I have. Knives Out I have seen. Oh, it's very good. It's yeah, on, I think I it's like on, it. if you have Amazon Prime, it's on there. Um, It's very good. So. Yeah, I totally nerded out on that movie for multiple reasons, and a lot of it was filmed in Massachusetts, where I live. And one was at one was at a bar where I would literally go to every weekend. Uh, well, not at the time they were filming, but like in the past, I'm like, "Holy shit! I drank there, and Chris Evans is there." <laughs> Him in his sweater. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I don't remember where I was going with that. I was reminiscing about all the things that I've watched in the last year, but. One also, movies, um, oh, keep finish. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I I was gonna say also like, I think sometimes I think sometimes like, there's so much of like the Marvel and in the Star Wars and things that like, especially in the space that we kind of occupy with these podcasts and and streaming and stuff like, we're expected to watch everything all the time and not deviate. That sometimes, like, all it takes is a palate cleanser to refresh yourself, too, right? And mm-hmm. I kind of forgot to palate cleanse, you know? Because, like, I'm not a big movie guy, right? Like, I'm not a big... I don't I don't go out of my way to watch movies or anything, like, even new movies. Like, there's very specific things I'll go watch. Uh, but I think, I think this past three months or so... I've been watching Ted Lasso and that is the ultimate palate cleanser to what Marvel and Star Wars and Disney is doing on Disney Plus or what HBO Warner Brothers and HBO are doing on you know with their stuff and it's just like not everything has to be like superheroes or laser swords or blowing shit up or you know what I mean like sometimes yeah. you just need something different and I kind of forgot about that or like i've been watching a lot of nfl games too because like obviously football's back and you know it's kind of exciting when the browns are good sometimes uh but (laughs) like that's also i'm using that as like a really good palate cleanser to this you know and it's like sometimes that's all you need is a palate cleanse so and and in the timing of football i mean i'm primarily a baseball fan but Watching, being able to keep track of the amount of baseball games is kind of exhausting. And one thing I love about football season, it's nice, clean. Well, I mean, if you want to watch all the games, then it's more frequently. But I just follow the Patriots. So for me, I just it's once a week. Hmm. That's where I get my palate cleanse. Yeah, I uh, like I'll watch I'll watch the Browns and I'll watch I'll usually watch the Sunday and Monday night games. I'm not gonna go. I'm not that person that has to go and watch like every single game. But like. Before I go to bed, like I'll turn it on and fall asleep while I'm watching the Sunday night game or the Monday night game. Uh, it's uh, just a nice palate cleanser. So, yeah, I think I think we all need to remember re, a nice reminder that palate cleansing is also nice. Because, like, I think it's a good example. I think is my wife and I 
well, right before the Rise of Skywalker came to Disney Plus, we re binged all of the Star Wars movies. And by the time we got to Rise of Skywalker, it was like, man, I'm so burned out on Star Wars. It's like, and I'm a I'm a sequel trilogy defender. I really like those movies. I think The Rise of Skywalker probably should have been two movies to get all that information in. But like, I like those movies. Uh, mm-hmm. And but like by the time we got to that ninth, well eleventh movie, it's just like. Jesus, I'm so tired of this. I just want it to end. <laughs> right? I just, I just want to see what happens. I want to see why the Emperor is in this stupid Man. movie. And I want to... I just want yeah. to... I just... And they, and they mishandled that so badly. Yeah. I kind of... Like, I... I, I kind of wish they would have, like, gone in with, like, a plan. You know? I mean, I know, like... I know the original trilogy didn't have, like, this laid out plan. And I know the the prequel trilogy was, like... Wait, wait! I'm so glad you said that because every time, every time I mention that, like, like people come at me because I'm a Star Trek fan, and I'm like, no, no I just, I Dude, just, I'm just, I'm you just really, a writer. You really, you really think George Lucas had Luke kiss his sister <laughs> in the second movie, yeah, exactly. and then he, know, he was like, he oh, I, was going on. I knew it the whole time they were related, so I made them kiss each other. <laughs> I was like, well, you just have other like, issues. You're, you're, <laughs> you're a fucking pervert. That's yeah. what you are. <laughs> So, like, I mean, there's no, there was no plan, but like, there, at there least, wasn't, there was not. At least, I mean, at least the truth. That's, that's the tr- honestly, that's honestly why it starts with episode four. Like, yeah. cause, cause like, I remember I was being, I was, I remember being a kid and seeing, I was like, episode four. And I immediately turned around and asked my dad, like, is there, are there other movies? And he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, like, we had the original VHS tapes and the, A New Hope doesn't it doesn't say episode four at the beginning of a new hope it just says star wars no okay well i'm old enough i'm old enough to remember when it actually said episode four on vhs no like yeah there was a there was a time i know i know there there is a version that says episode four but we had a version of it that didn't say episode four oh so they saved you a lot of confusion yeah (laughs) and i also i think i watched return of the jedi first but that's Dang. Yeah. To be fair, Gangster. I was. To be fair, I was. Gangster. Little, I know. So I know. I, I didn't really everybody understand. Was like, everybody was, was super young back then, so they probably they they a lot of movies were probably seen out of turn. But, like, I I do I think like the difference between the original trilogy not having a plan, and this new trilogy not having a plan is that nobody <laughs> knew nobody. Nobody knew that Star Wars was going to be as big of a hit as it was. And I think he yeah. kind of wrote the sequels by the seat of his pants so he could get them out faster. And mm-hmm. 30, 40 years later, when you put out a, a sequel trilogy to one of the most beloved trilogies in film history, you should probably lay out at least an outline of like this. These are the events that need to happen. This is, you know, we need to have kind of one mind in charge. And I don't know if Kathleen Kennedy is the person to do that or not, but like, it's, I don't know. They, they, those movies just felt so incoherent to each other. They felt like three very I, standalone films with th- the char- the same characters in it. I feel like Kathleen Kennedy gets a lot of, he gets a lot of flack because, because just because it's, it's, it's like, it's like when it, Let's, let's look at politics, for example. Like, look at how people are acting right now because we no longer have forty-five in office. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't want to acknowledge forty-six at all. And I think, I think this is what happens with a lot of like uh, a lot of like just our set media. You know, mm-hmm. like for example, like when, like for example, when we heard that if George R. R. Martin dies, like someone has to finish the seventh book, and and people are mm-hmm. are, are people are well, anxious about that. Well, you know? it's like. T- <laughs> Tom Clancy books are still coming out, and he's been dead for a decade. He, so yeah, he, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, yeah, somebody's like somebody's so, ghost writing for him, clearly, or so, taking his yeah. ideas and you know making them cohesive stories. Yeah, so I feel like the whole Kathleen Kennedy thing. I feel like she's getting a little too much. I feel like she's getting a little too much flack, you know. But but this because at the same time, you know, J.J. Um, Abrams is the reason why like this stuff got basically got re got green lit. You know? Well, I th- I mean, I think The Force Awakens is a perfectly well done first film in a trilogy, in a new trilogy. I like. You mean you mean the movie that basically copied exactly Episode Four? Yeah, but I think 
I think in terms of the ways the prequels turned out, mm-hmm. that first movie had to be a safe movie. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I would hundred percent. I think it had to be I, enjoyable I, I and do. safe, right? Like, I do. I mean, yes, there's a lot of parallels you can make to A New Hope, right? Including the giant Death Star planet thing in the trench run, right? Especially, but I think even though it was derivative and safe, it was still a really good film. And then they followed it up with Rogue One, which is arguably one of the best uh, uh, of the best Star Wars movie that Disney's done, right? So, um, wow, Leron, you could have just said that out loud. (laughs) Okay, okay, it got a little too nerdy in here. Let's go ahead and close my topic. I, I just, you know, I just wanted to I just want to finish it up by saying, like, I think those first two movies that Disney did were, were super well done. I still I still like The Last Jedi, even though it doesn't really feel cohesive with Force Awakens. I liked Solo. I think Solo Man, is a fun movie. The Last Jedi was a mess. Oh, my God. I, see, I don't think it was. I think it was uh, you know, fun. Well, except, I, I, except, I, for the, except for the part where... Princess Leia gets sucked out into space and then she comes back using the force <laughs> like that. So my problem was that of, with that was that movie came out after uh, Carrie Fisher passed away. Right. And I know they wanted to respect her as an actress and the character and everything. But to me, that was your out to, you know, like so if you're gonna write if, Leia out of the series, yeah. If you're gonna, because like obviously their plan was to kill one character per movie. Like that, you could have saved Luke's death for the last movie, then. Yeah. And like I know that sounds very disrespectful and whatever, but like all in all, this is a this is a multi billion dollar franchise you're talking about that has incredibly passionate fans, right? That like one and a half of the eleven movies, like. This was this was the time to write her out. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think you could have I think you could have gotten away with that, and you could have just like through press releases or whatever said this is why we did this. Like this is, you know, we respect Carrie Fisher and what she did for this franchise and everything. But like, this is you know this is what we had to do to make the next movie work and the trilogy come to a close. So right, because talk about incohesive. Those weird scenes with Carrie Fisher in in Rise of Skywalker, where all she did was like they had the same shot of her hugging Ray like seventy five times because they didn't have any other they didn't have any other footage of her. It's like come on, yeah. So, anyways, we'll we'll wrap that topic. But that was a good topic. Great, great topic, yes. Laron. Finger snaps. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sorry it wasn't on the top of my head. Like, I wrote it down earlier while I was at work. I had a long work day, so I, I wrote it down because I knew, like, somewhere along the course of the day I was going to forget about it, and then I forgot where I put my notes. <laughs> um, Stephanie, what is your topic? It's all right. I, I've learned from Laurent's mistakes, and I pulled up my topic on my phone because I was going to forget if I didn't. Um. Do you guys like stealth games or seg- uh, segments of stealth in a game? And give some examples of some that you love or hate. Oh, gosh. Thanks to, uh, thanks sat- to Metal Gear Solid, I, I like segments of stealth. I do not like full stealth games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is why, which is why I'm, I'm definitely enjoying like Metroid Dread. Like, it's giving me, it's yeah. giving me enough that I have to be stealthy, but at the same time, it's not how I need to play the game. Like, it, like, cause I mean, I've gotten to a point now where I can actually fight them bastards off if they grab me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes, so sometimes, like, I'll see the radar pinging all over the place. So I'm just like, fuck it, I'm just running. <laughs> just, just run, just run. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it kind of depends on. The game, like I, I really enjoyed the first Splinter Cell game, even though I had never played any other game after that. Um, I, I think the way that certain games do segments of stealth, like I think those early Assassin's Creed games are very uh, hit or miss with those, mostly leaning towards the miss side, right? When you have to like 
follow someone through the grass and, you know, you have to not get caught, but, you know, you can't really see, have a 360 degree view around you. So if the, even if the people you're following can't see you, someone behind you might see you, or you have to like assassinate somebody that's watching you while you're following. And then if you make too much noise, right, it's just, I think Assassin's Creed 3 and Black Flag were two very uh, big uh, those were that that was a very big detriment to those games and uh I don't like that kind of thing. It's like trailing people I think really sucks in games. But then there's games that do it really well, like Dishonored I think does it really well if you play that way. Uh I think Splinter Cell and Metal Gear are obviously huge uh franchises based on that mechanic, even though Ubisoft doesn't want to make a Splinter Cell game anymore. Uh so yeah, I mean I'm not like a big stealth fan, but when it's done right, you know, there's always like an exception to the rule, right? Like we talked about earlier with, I don't really care about Metroidvanias, but Metroid Dread is like one of the best games I've played all year. Um, So maybe I do like Metroidvanias. I've just let fear conquer my gaming habits. Um, But this game's helping you get over that fear. It is. Until an, em- until an Emmy comes at me and I'm just running for my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you guys heard me before we started the show. I was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. No, fucking, I'm fighting him. <laughs> you, uh, the guy was going back and forth from like, oh, God, I'm going to die. They're like, no, I'm fighting this bastard. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, shit, he's got ice beams. <laughs> I can't fight him. <laughs> Man, wow. Uh what about what about yeah, you? Like that, like that, that's broken. I'm I'm sorry. That's that's broken. <laughs> you just have to get just good, keep... Laron. Yeah, you need to take some time away from the game and come back to it, refreshed and not that's angry. Why, that's why I'm on this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, for me, I honestly didn't think about stealth as a mechanic until much later. I mean, I had a very simplistic. Uh, start to gaming where I was in adve- into adventure games like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time where it had like this very tiny segment of sneaking past the castle guards to get to Princess Zelda and it's very simple that mechanic is just don't let them see you mm-hmm. um, and you know just other games like you know it, so fast forward to 2018 or so I forget what year but a friend heavily insisted on The Last of Us remastered and I know it's technically not a stealth game but it's a it's it's a game that where you have to choose to either go in guns blazing or take out things silently. So although not purely a stealth game, that I struggled very much so in the beginning because I'm used to like, oh, a bunch of zombies, let's just go just pop them off in the head and usually I'll end up getting my face ripped off by a clicker. Um, and in that case, the clickers, they, they detect you by the sound that you make. So it was new for me to experience and I have to walk very slow, I have to crouch, I have to throw a empty soda can across the room. It was definitely a different pacing, but I actually grew to like it depending on the game, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it de- it depends on the game and it depends if the mechanic is done well, right? There's there's times like I feel like man, what's a What's a good example of like stealth in a game that just really sucks? I don't know. Like when you have to like sneak past cameras or lasers or something and like it's like almost impossible to get through without it. Like it, there's in some games there's like clearly like a like a I don't know. There's like a, a way to sneak through a hallway and like it's damn near impossible to do it because of cameras or uh, like there's, I know in, in GoldenEye, there's a, there's a mission where you have to shoot all the cameras, right? And there's one that's like always hiding. And if, if it sees you, like the alarm will go off and then you have to fight like 5 million guys. This is on like one of the higher, like double agent or whatever, double O agent or yeah. whatever. And like, there's always, there's this one part where there's two cameras, right? And you have to, you have to like know the level so well so one of them doesn't see you because they'll turn like almost at the same time and you'll have to like take them both out within maybe like two or three seconds of each other or it'll see you and it's like 
man, this this is like this is not fun. This is not a mechanic that's fun. How did this get past Nintendo QA or whatever, right? Like, I, I just, I don't know. But then you get games like, I would say something like, like Splinter Cell that does it so well, you know, to to make it fun and and interesting and with with gadgets and the night vision and hiding in the grass or taking people out and hiding them in lockers or 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 freezers or whatever and it's like this is fun this is what stealth should be and and you know i again it just it depends on if if it's done well if the mechanics are fun or interesting uh because if it doesn't if it does if it's not done well it could ruin the game yeah has yeah. anyone played origami no uh-uh. okay all right is so this, i can't speak too much to it is it a stealth-based game Yes, mm. almost completely stealth based, um, and I know that the sequel came out, and I don't know why they made a sequel because it seems like not many people are very familiar with it. Let me just see I if I can on, find it. I think it's on Game yeah, Pass. Yeah, it's on actually. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, it says Aragami is an action adventure stealth video game, and whoops, my screen reloaded. Uh, the cast you as an undead assassin with the power to control the shadows, teleport to any shadow become invisible materialize weapons and summon a shadow to infiltrate the enemy ranks and dispose your targets i don't know i didn't really get i had a couple of friends that really didn't speak too highly of that game but i guess i shouldn't you know trash it unless i play it you know um, what else was gonna say oh i can't remember someone say something while i think about what i'm trying to remember <laughs> um uh, um so Here's a here, Corey. Would you say like the first Splinter Cell was your was your favorite of all like the stealth genre games? I mean, yeah, just because I don't go out of my way to play stealth games. I mean, I I think Assassin's Creed, like those early Assassin's Creed games, I really like. But I don't know if you would really call them stealth games. Maybe the first game, maybe that first game, maybe is like a stealth light game Mm -hmm. uh because they have the crowd hiding mechanic or like hiding in the bushes or up in the the towers with the you know the the same building with like the little towels hanging on them and you're just like oh i'm jumping in here oh they can't find me (laughs) you know that kind of thing uh and like taking out the like stealthily taking out the bosses in that game was a really interesting fun way to kill them you didn't have to do it that way but making like trying to do it that way and actually getting it uh, was a really fun thing, and actually you get you get achievements for doing it that way on Xbox. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I I would say that for F- Splinter Cell One or Assassin's Creed are probably my favorite stealth games. Um, a series I've never played that I really want to is Metal Gear Solid. Uh, uh, but with never the, played, I've never played. Because I want to. I pl- haven't either. I mean, I want to play the first game, but it's stranded on things that I don't own currently. You can so- get it. Uh, there's a PC version of it. Oh, is there? Wow. Yeah, I believe it's on. I believe it's on GOG. P- PC man, nobody plays PC games. Hey, <laughs> nerd. Nerd. Laron has left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, which is funny, because I actually own Twin Snakes for GameCube. Uh, so I guess I could probably technically play that. Never played it. It's, I mean, it, I don't know. the the only The only time I ever played Metal Gear was Metal Gear Solid Two, the Metal Gear Solid Two demo uh, that came with Zone of the Enders, the tanker mission, and mm-hmm. it was really weird and really fun. And then I never bought the game. So, uh, but I that's a series that I would really like to play. But with the rumors of that first game being remade at some point, I kind of just want to wait, you know? So Right. Uh, just because, like, when games get remade, I feel like that's, like, the best way to play them. You know, like, with, with Resident Evil 2, like, I never played Resident Evil 2 because I don't do scary games, but, like, I love Resident Evil, the first game. the re- Well, the remake for GameCube, I would say. I... I love that first game and it's not scary to me because it's a puzzle game, but like mm-hmm. <laughs> playing the remakes of two and three, just like, I'm just like, no pass hard pass for me. 
But I liked. I, I'm the weird person that liked five and six because they were more action oriented of Resident Evil. So like, I don't know. I know people don't like Resident Evil Six for some reason, but I, I kind of liked it because it was it felt like Gears of War almost. So. Well, makes sense. You liked it for the action, and I think most Resident Evil fans just don't want Resident Evil for that reason. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, and I and I totally un- I can totally separate that, right? It's the same with Leron, you're playing through the Dead Space trilogy, right? Mm-hmm. And so like 1 and 2 are drastically different games than 3, which is why like it's not that Dead Space 3 is a bad game. It's just not what people want from a Dead Space game. Yeah. And, you know, that's I think I th- I think I am able to to separate like yes this game is good but it's not what people want from this franchise you know so, it's like when assassin's creed went into an open world rpg that has no assassinating in it whatsoever <laughs> and i like that, that was- i love like assassin's creed odyssey is probably in my top 10 favorite games of all time mm. oh okay it's so good but like there's no assassin's creed anything in it whatsoever it's just it's just an open world action RPG that takes place in ancient Greece. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say now. Um Hitman. That's what I have a love hate relationship with as far as stealth. Mm. Uh-huh. So I've been playing through Hitman two because there's another podcast that's been doing it episode by episode and I wanna compare scores. And Technically, you don't need to be the perfect silent assassin to play the game. You can do whatever you want if you just want to shoot your target point blank and then get bullets rained on you, fine, you know, as long as you make it out alive. But, you know, the kind of what attracts people to Hitman is to try to find the most creative and usually silent way to assassinate your targets, right? Mm -hmm. And I like the options, but sometimes it's just super, super hard. you got to find the right you know, super user outfit to, to dress up as. And, you know, maybe I just suck at video games, but I remember one particular level in, like, in Colombia, I needed to get the mechanic's wrench. And I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to kill the mechanic. But his wife would always, like, turn around at that moment, and I had to push her off. And then there was <laughs> someone who saw me do that. And then if you get spotted by the cameras, you got to make sure that you go to the room and destroy the evidence before you leave the game. So even though being stealthy isn't a hundred percent required for the game, I get I almost got frustrated because I wanted to get the best score possible, but there were just so many factors. I don't know. It just that's actually the one thing that ticks me off about the Hitman series is why I really don't play it. <laughs> yeah. Because like because like you know trying to like trying to like check every mark off like that's mm-hmm. the part that that's the part that makes it for me tedious and frustrating. All right, well, I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels that way. I feel like that's kind of what gets me, and I don't know. It, I quickly just kind of lost interest, and in, I got at the second to last mission, and I just didn't finish it. Oh, going, oh, going into, going back to our topic last week about rage quitting. <laughs> oh, yep, <laughs> yeah, I think, that was it. I think for me, Hitman is a franchise that I enjoy watching people play more than I like yeah. playing, because like uh, every year. Giant Bomb does a thing around their Game of the Year content that they do that one of their things that they do is called uh, uh, Hitsmas. And it's they play, they what they do is like they put a bunch of uh, Hitman related things in hats and they'll draw like you have to play this level with this outfit and this set of weapons right and they draw the weapons out of a hat and they draw the outfits out of the hat and they have to like try to finish the level without getting caught with these items uh and it's like really fascinating to watch you know sometimes it takes 45 minutes sometimes it takes three hours for them to do this but like it's really fun to watch people play a uh, hitman especially people who are good at it and they know like like they know the maps they know everybody's routine they know how to distract certain people. Like it's just the the way that the systems work in Hitman is really fascinating. Almost to the point where like it's more fascinating to watch the systems in Hitman than it is in Breath of the Wild. You know? <laughs> Cause like even like the homing suitcase is like really funny. 
I don't know if you guys saw the homing suitcase thing, but it was, no. it was like a it was like a bug in one of the in one of the first games, and then they made it an unlockable in the new games. It's just really funny. What's the name of the, the group that does that Hitman thing? Because like, see, I would be fine watching it. I just don't want to mm-hmm. play. Uh, <laughs> Giant Bomb. They and they've been around forever. Uh, they on, they only do it at Christmas time though. Okay. So, uh, they also do a. They also did a series called Mario Party Party, where they played through oh, all of the Lord. Mario. They played through fifty turns of every Mario Party game. Oh, oh God! Yeah. Oh my Lord. God! And, oh my God! Are they, they're they're all still friends. Yeah, well, it's funny because the one guy that puts the show on loves Mario Party and everybody else hates it, and he makes everybody play it with him for 50 turns. And, they, <laughs> and like, the entire time you just see, like, the a lot, of the, a lot of the Mario Party stuff is behind their paid content wall, but the first episode is free. Like, that's what they do. They release the first episode of their series for free, and then if you want more, you can buy their premium subscription, which is, like, $50 a year, I think. Uh, but... Yeah, it's like it's really funny. Um, Jeez, it's so funny. Mario Party Party is my favorite uh, thing to watch while I'm like falling asleep or working on stuff. So that's I have to check that out. It's so funny. I love Mario Party. I think it's because I like Mario Party, and nobody else likes Mario Party. I'm you know? not a fan. The only the only Mario Party game I I, I have any respect for is Super Mario Party on the Switch. We. Yeah. Uh, we need to get Laron in on a Mario Party stream at some point. Uh, yeah, I would pay to see that. Yeah. I would like to participate, actually. Yeah. Well, you're going to participate, and we're going to drag Laron through it, and it'll be funny. All right. Uh, you think? You think? Yes. Yes. I don't think I know. It's good content. Well. <laughs> As they say on the internet. Um. I guess that's kind of it. It's a brief topic. You know, I just, I remember being super frustrated in the beginning, but I've actually kind of learned to love stealth segments as long as it's done well and consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the major thing for like genres that aren't super popular is like, yeah, you kind of lean away from it, but if you get something that's done right and done well, Uh then, then it's, you know, you'll bite. So, well, I guess it's I guess it's my topic now, huh? So super curious. Yeah, mine's not really a gaming topic. It's more of like a it's more of like a life topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said at the top of the show, I just I recently quit my job to start a new one, and um, unless it's something that I'm doing myself, right? Like a something that I'm working on myself or doing like a side job for myself or whatever like this is only the third job i've ever quit uh and it was like it's always really weird when i quit a job because like i it you know you like the you make friends with people that you work with and you know i mean i know i know like i'm moving on to something better for me and my family and you know now it's like a potential career path now instead of, you know, just like a job. But I just, have you ever like, when you quit a job, have you ever like thought about the people that you're leaving, especially people that you've made friends with? Um, Oh yeah. And if like you're ever going to like keep in touch or be friends still, or, you know, kind of talk to ever again, just because like it's, it, for me, like like I said, this is only like the third major job I've ever quit to move on to something else, and it's always weird because like the last job I worked, I only keep in touch with like two people that I worked with, and I worked there for eleven years. So it, I just you know, I, I just didn't know if you guys ever like stayed in touch with people that you worked with in the past. Uh, I, I have for as long as like, as long as I could, like I eventually like my last, the last job I had before I wound up with this, with the IT company I work for, that I've been an employee with for the last eight years, um, 
uh, was GameStop. Like I was, um, I was a full time employee at GameStop. I was in management and stuff like that. And, um, and then, and after I, and after I, after I was terminated from GameStop, like I tried to keep in touch with a lot of the people that that you know, like I had like built like friendships and relationships with, you know, throughout that time. But eventually, like we all just kind of like lost track of each other and stuff like that. Like nobody, I think there's only one. As a matter of fact, there's only one person that has been a GameStop when I started that's still there and that's the only person that I actually have contact with because it's my he's my old boss and basically he's on the path to retirement with the company at this point. Mm. That's well, I really like that topic. I um you know, not counting the odds and ends jobs that I had as a teenager, I've only been with one, uh, two companies and the second company I'm still with them. So the previous I will say is a retail pharmacy chain um, that I worked there as an intern before I graduated and then as a pharmacist after I graduated. And as much as I struggled through the job, it was the people that kept me going. Mm. Um, We were great friends. Um, We would hang out after work. Um, And, you know, I could you spend most of your time at work. So I just was lucky enough to develop really close relationships with them. And then when I quit, um, I was able to stay in touch with most of them, but you know, I don't know if it's just people outgrow each other, but I don't really stay in touch. Like I know we're connected on Facebook and stuff like that, but we just don't talk so much anymore. It does make me sad. And that's more of a life thing. Um, but I know people go their own ways and I don't hold anything against them. And with my new job, um, our company is combining with another company and people are leaving. I'll leave it there. If you know what I'm saying, people are leaving, yeah. and um, I'm I'm kind of struggling a little bit, especially with my department, um, about staying in touch with these people. I kind of don't want to make, quote unquote, the same mistake as my last job, but I don't know if I have much control over it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just it's been a weird process. Like, not only am I leaving people that I've been kind of friends with for you know a couple of years now, but like going into a new job where I don't know anybody. This this is the other thing too is like the last couple jobs that I started like going in, I at least knew like one or two people so I had that like I don't know, like that anchor to like lean on a little bit when I just didn't know anybody, you know, but now I'm going into some a place where like I don't know anybody, you know. Like I've I've met them and talked to them and stuff and everybody seems like really nice and I'm really excited. It's just like it's for me, it's weird that I just don't have that like one piece of familiarity to grab onto, you know. And I, it's, <laughs> it's weird because like I actually feel like a, for the first time ever, I feel like a, a an adult, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like I, like we got yeah. your big boy pants on. Well, that's the thing. I don't have big boy pants. I have to go buy some. Uh, <laughs> my wife and I are going to go shopping like this weekend or next week or whatever. Cause like the last couple jobs, like I managed a restaurant, so I wore shorts in the kitchen. Like, and then this past job, like was like, I worked at a car dealership and we all just had like this same polo shirts and khaki pants, right? Like it wasn't like, Hey, I have a rec. I have a recommendation for you as far as like, as far as like really like comfortable pants and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and something that you can, something you can basically wear all, all freaking day and stuff. Uh, they're, they're, um, it's a uh, thousand miles. That's the name of the company. Like, um, like I'm actually wearing a pair of their shorts right now. Mm. Um, and they have, uh, they have, they have, th- they have, uh, they're, they have chino pants and, um, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, I mean, like you know, like hey, maybe, maybe if there, maybe somebody from Thousand Miles is listening, you know, like they may pick us up for a sponsorship because I actually like, I actually like their clothes. All right, so it's called the All Day Chino Pants, right? Um, and uh, let's see, they run for they, they are, they are a little pricey. I will say that they are a little pricey. They're seventy five dollars a pair, but honestly, because the shorts I'm wearing, like I bought a two pack of the shorts, and they're like they were like sixty eight dollars. Um, but um, but uh, let's let's see. Uh, they're they're water and stain resistant. Uh, like you don't have to worry about ironing them. 
Like they're they're that good. They have a four way stretch, so you know, like <laughs> if you're gaining weight, <laughs> or you're one of those people that are always in like doing like precarious, you know, in precarious positions around the office or whatnot. They stretch. They're they're stretchable, and they uh and they quick dry. So are you working in? I'm an IT. <laughs> I'm, I'm an IT guy. I'm on I'm on top of desks. I'm under desks. I'm um, I'm I'm in I'm in crawl well not crawl spaces, but you you get the you get the gist like. Like I guarantee, like I guarantee you, people walked in their office and see me under their desk, and, and you know, like like bent over, like on all fours. Sounds under like their a desk, setup you know. for your OnlyFans. No, or or for After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, I'll send you, I'll, I'll send you, a, I'll send you a link, and um, I think there's actually um, I shoot, I might actually have like a couple of promo codes from when I made when I made a couple of purchases. Cool. But yeah, but here's the. Yeah, but here's the link Ooh, for the actual stuff. Oh, you're looking on the website right now? Yep. Yeah, yeah, they've got men's and women's stuff. Yeah. And um and and trust me, like they're like this the shorts the the shorts that I'm wearing are called the um the shorts that I'm wearing, they're called the all day shorts. I'm wearing the elite all day shorts. Um and I also have a pair of the all day pants, which yo, that it's it's a game changer. <laughs> Like it's it, it's like I can really like bum around and he's like I need to buy a second pair but I'm waiting for a, 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 I'm waiting for the other color to come in my size. Listen, there is nothing more important than a comfortable set of pants because you know as a woman you know if I'm out I'll actually wear dresses as long as weather permits and people are like oh why are you all dressed up oh nice dress I'm like you know the reason why I wear dresses. I wear dresses, so when I eat, I feel like there's nothing pressing against my stomach. And it's just <laughs> <free>. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with wanting to look pretty or feminine. I just, I can sit and eat comfortably. <laughs> Damn, Corey. Damn, Corey. I wish we had options like that where, you know, like, we, like, we could eat without nothing, like, you know, like, mashing our right? stomach in. <laughs> I know. But we're, we are large men, so, I mean, we don't, we just don't get that option. Exactly. It's like our pants. Our pants let us know when we've eaten too much. <laughs> I mean, even when you haven't eaten all day, they let you know if you've eaten too much sometimes. <laughs> so, oh uh, man. But I don't know. I just I wanted to just. I mean, I know it's not like an exciting topic or anything, but like sometimes, sometimes yeah. you know, people if they're switching jobs or switching careers, it can be kind of scary or challenging and you know just kind of wanted to get it out there and talk about it a little bit so yeah, no, absolutely um it is I, Leron. Going into a... <laughs> thank you I'm trying not to laugh <laughs> i'm trying to do this podcast okay just leave me alone <laughs> Laurent's like that kid who's writing notes and passing them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, okay. For everybody who's listening right now, like I just, I just wrote, no, I just wrote in our in our in our private chat that Corey's voice is getting progressively and progressively rougher and rougher. <laughs> His voice is actually cracked like four different times. <laughs> it, it, like dude, it's actually way better than it was at work today. When I was at work today, it was like non-existent. It just, it sounded like I smoked five packs of cigarettes a day for fifty years. <laughs> And like you get the you get the old lady voice, Leron, this is your mother. I need you to go down to the store and give me some smokes <laughs> and uh, some slim oh gems and uh, some big bag of Doritos. Oh my god! Even a big bag of Doritos sounds amazing right now. I mean, yeah, it yeah. does. I just I uh, finally busted out some water, so maybe that'll fix some of the issue. But sorry, guys. This throat, <laughs> this throat thing. It's, uh, it's not cooperating. It's fine. Fine. Just a little honey. Add a little honey to the water. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a topic from the audience to get a fourth topic in here, or we can just kind of end it here if you want. It doesn't matter. Let's see. Where is the topic? Jacob Galatrad. Hey, you. Where is it at? I missed it. Somebody have it up because I I can't find it. Uh, you didn't send a doc. I didn't. You're right. I didn't. It was tweeted at us. <gasps> oh. So hold on. I'm gonna find it. Somebody. I'm I'm, I'm I'm just saying, bro. 
Somebody rant while I find this. Ba, ba, ba. So, uh, Stephanie, what's the next game on your list for um for uh what's the next game on your list after you I guess after you move on past Metroid? I mean, I'm currently also I feel like I'm playing one game per system. I'm still working through Ghost of Tsushima on mm-hmm. PlayStation. But I'll tell you what's really challenging is I went probably a week and a half of not playing it because I got into the medium on my Xbox. And I don't think it's a good game for me to step away from because I totally forgot like the combo and combat moves. So I was getting my oh, ass yeah. kicked by all the readers, which stinks. I'm like, it's clearly my fault. It's not the game's fault because I stepped away and I forgot all the, bu- the moves. Um, I'm playing the medium on xbox i don't normally like horror games but i'm forcing myself to experience one so it's not bad um but honestly the next kind of game will be guardians of the galaxy because i pre-ordered that one um it's coming out later in october so once that comes out i'm hoping i'm at least done with dread and that'll be the next game that i hit up yeah, I'm not quite sure what the next game is going to be for me because I got like because I got like a, a running backlog of games I'm actively trying to play for like right now. Like I still got Cannon Bridge of Spirits that I gotta get I gotta get I gotta get through and and I'm and I'm upset at myself because I should have beat that by now so I could have had a review up on that one. Um, and I've got Tales of Arise uh, and I've got that Unmetal game that I told you all about last week. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, there's Metroid and the monster and the Monster Hunter uh, Monster Hunter Rise demo just dropped on, on the PC today. Because mm, you haven't played enough of Be that busy this year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but now it's at 4K and 60 frames a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I no, it's, it's I, faster than 60 frames. Like it's <laughs> well, okay, nerd. <laughs> I found <laughs> I found the questions to the. Uh, to the oh, yeah. top. So we have two actually. So we're going to kind of rapid fire this and then we'll, uh, we'll get out of here. Galatrad, right. Jacob Taylor from Nintendo power block and twitch.tv slash Galatrad. Go follow him. He's great. Uh, he says, what's a game that shook the whole industry, but you didn't care about it at all. Ooh. 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 I think mine was Modern Warfare 2. Wait, Modern Warfare... I don't think Modern Warfare 2 shook the whole industry. I think Modern Warfare well, 1 shook the industry well, hard, a lot no. harder than 2 did. Well, I think people were surprised at how good Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 1 was. That mm-hmm. when Modern Warfare 2 was announced, people were ex- so excited and so ready to play the second one. And like to me, that is like... Because to me, like the ultimate launch for me personally was halo three. Like I stood in line, there was probably like a hundred people standing in line for halo three at a midnight launch at GameStop. Right. That to me was exciting, but like modern warfare two, like I could have cared less. And I feel like, but I still feel like modern warfare two was the bigger game ultimately over halo three. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I get you. Um, well, you guys have heard me say this quite on quite a few different uh, po- podcasts that I've been on for Boss Rush. Uh, definitely uh, Ocarina of Time. Ah, mm. uh, it hurts, but okay. It it, it, it de- no, it hurt. It, it hurt me that I couldn't I couldn't latch on to it. It, it really hurt because I really tried, but you know, it hurt you me. Know, like it hurt me in a way that made me feel really stupid, and for that, that game will always be me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, oh no, I, I guess I just wasn't. I guess I just wasn't in a place that I was ready for. Uh, I was ready for like Link to have voices. Sure as hell, cannot stand that little the little butterfly thing always screaming at you. Um, oh, and, and Navi at this point is not <laughs> even the worst. Navi at this point isn't even the worst one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Tingle now, right? <laughs> no, I think it's no. I think it's Fi Fee Fi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, like a yeah, but no, that actually stunted my. I feel uh, I I feel like I can say this. It stunted my growth with the Legend of Zelda because like I was I was doing pretty good with Zelda games until the sixty four game came until the sixty four games came out because because of because of my because of the distaste I had for Ocarina of Time I never gave a I never gave a Majora's Mask a fair shake, um, and then further iterations of the of the more 3d style Zelda games just have not latched onto me. I, 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 uh, I, I, I did enjoy wind waker. I did enjoy that. I, I just, I feel like 
I like as as revolutionary as those 3D Zelda game, like the 64 Zelda games were, right? The same way that Mario 64 was super revolutionary. The, I don't think that those games age particularly well. They definitely didn't age as well as something like Wind Waker or for me like Twilight Princess, right? Like I I feel like I feel like they were it, it, I think it's Final Fantasy 7 syndrome too, right? Where like if you didn't play it when it came out and you played it after the the uh following games that came out, like it's just it just doesn't have the same effect for you as, mm-hmm. you know, it did when it came out, right? Like cuz like I play I played and finished Majora's Mask before I beat Ocarina of Time and this is a terrible story and I know I feel really stupid but when I first played Ocarina of Time I didn't know you could go back in time so I didn't know how to finish the game <laughs> hey, you volunteered that information we I, weren't going to no, say anything I, I, so for Ocarina of Time you did not know that you had to manipulate time yeah because like I was, <laughs> I was dumb it, <laughs> it, was, it was also like I had never played A Link to the Past or like any Zelda game like the only Zelda game up to that point that I'd ever played was uh Link's Awakening and like I didn't even know like what the purpose of Zelda was up to that point because you know I just wasn't playing Zelda I was playing Mario and Ninja Turtles and I was a Genesis kid so I was playing you know like Rocket Knight Adventures and you know Jurassic Park and all these weird games that probably still aren't very good but I was seven eight years old and I didn't know any better uh, yeah, when so you when hear I, like when you hear it like that, that makes that makes perfect sense, honestly. Yeah. So like when I when I was playing Ocarina of Time, I thought the game was great at the time until I like when I when I don't know what to do in a game, I get really frustrated and like there's obviously you break no controllers. No, yeah. God, I went through so many 360 controllers. Uh but like there's no internet at the time to look it up. At least I mean there was, but there wasn't like it wasn't fast. Like there was I think IGN had was like the the at its infancy, right? And it didn't have any wikis or anything like it does now. Uh, so like I just I didn't know what to do, so I stopped playing, you know. And I was really frustrated because I was actually really enjoying the game. Uh, and then I played I played Majora's Mask, and I loved it. I loved Majora's Mask for some reason. I just like it clicked with me, and mm-hmm. so. I, I rented Majora's Mask, and then after I rented it, I went out and bought Majora's Mask and the strategy guide to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask at the same time. And I, like, you should see my Ocarina of Time strategy guide now. It's, like, shredded. It's shredded <laughs> because I used, I used it so much to find all the heart pieces, find all the secrets and collectibles and stuff because there's a big thing in the back of the guide where it's, like, here's where all the heart pieces are and... uh. Then, you know, Ocarina of Time just left a bad taste in my mouth because it made me feel stupid and I didn't like it. Uh, but I think a lot of games at the, in that era and even in, even into the early PS2 and GameCube era, like those games just didn't age well because some, some people didn't know how to use a second stick as a camera, right? Like they were still experimenting with that. Oh, yeah. There was no universal, like shooting mechanics were like obviously the triggers are your shooting mechanics right and obviously the x button is jump like they were still experimenting with all these weird control schemes and like i mean look at the nintendo 64 controller that thing is just a I, whoever designed that was like really high or something someday one day and they're just like what if we gave it three prongs and one stick and there's a d-pad on here but i don't think any game uses it question <laughs> oh, question speaking of the nintendo 64 controller is was it just am i the only person that like that freaking that freaking analog stick gave like the worst freaking callus no it did on okay, your thumbs okay. like on yeah. your thumb like right here or like when yeah. you're playing mario party the big blister that you would get here because you had to do this right? game yeah to the point where like nintendo would mail people who bought the game gloves <laughs> any, anybody yeah. still have their mario party club <laughs> it's just me I heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I just I just think certain games um I just I just think certain games just haven't aged as well or like if you're not because even at the time like I still wasn't like into games the way we are now, right? Like I I was reading Nintendo Power, but like I was waiting for like King Griffey Jr. baseball sequel to come out and Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey and 
1080 snowboarding. Like I was, those were the games that I liked to play at that time. And like, yeah, Mario 64 was super fun and revolutionary. And I love Super Mario 64. But then I would move on to like Mario Kart and Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. And like Zelda, Zelda didn't even become one of my favorite franchises until probably when, when Wind Waker came out, to be honest with you. Like I, I was, when Wind Waker came out, it was like, it was one of those games that I just was, and to be fair, I was just like everybody else who like hated the art direction. I wanted like a dark Majora's Mask-esque sequel in that art style, especially after the Space World demo they showed where Link was fighting Ganon in like this really sophisticated looking art style at the time. And it was like, wow, this is awesome. Which that art style ended up going into Twilight Princess. And now everybody thinks Wind Waker is better than Twilight Princess and the rest is history. But like when I played Wind Waker, I was like really enamored with what the game was trying to do and how different it was, uh, you know, because it, it was just so different than anything that we had played before, especially for that series. So, uh, well, I, I will say this because Ocarina of Time is my personal just when I say favorite game. Per, it's not because I think it's the best game. It's just literally a personal thing. So even someone who personally loves Ocarina of Time to death, mm-hmm. I definitely can understand that. Although at its time, like with Mario 64, it just revolutionized many things. Yeah. So just mm-hmm. moving from 2D to 3, stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you, if I when I hop back into that, I'm like, it's a little tough. It's a little cringy. Very bumpy rides. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why, you know, once I got over the nostalgia sickness that overcame me when I learned that Nintendo 64 games were coming to Nintendo Switch Online, which I still probably will pay for. Mm -hmm. But now that I think about it, I'm like, how often am I going to want to go back to these N64 games? Because they really, like you said, Corey, they're they're probably like the worst, Mm -hmm. like, as far as age-wise. Yeah, I mean, like, when the the Mario 3D All-Star Collection came out, I was really excited because, like, Mario's... I'm not a 3D Mario guy, but Mario 64 is like one of my favorite games of all time, right? Like, again, goes back to that thing. I'm not a 3D platformer guy, but Mario 64 was so revolutionary and did everything right at the time that it was like, it's it's definitely still sits atop of like one of my favorite games of all time. But when mm. I went back to play it, I was like, man, this game could really use some sort of like quality of life improvements like the camera or just some of the physics that are you know different and and granted i had just come off of playing like what was some of mario odyssey or like uh new super mario uh brothers u deluxe or whatever and like the physics are really different and maybe i just was used to those physics or whatever but i just feel like I feel like some of these games could use quality of life imp- improvements. Like the 3DS versions of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are great. I wish they would put those games on Switch at some point. Because right. they, they they did a lot of quality of life improvements. Yeah, I really wish I really wish we had gotten the 3DS version of Mario 64. <laughs> With all yeah, the stars well, there's 30 extra stars. There's different characters, right? There's unique abilities. Like, there's just different the things. Cam- the, the camera was better. Yeah. So... I don't know. We didn't really answer the question, but it was a great discussion. <laughs> uh, well, you but, did. You uh, yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Yeah, I said I said Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Um, um, uh, for me, um, you guys are gonna hate me for this, and that's, but uh, I just could not get into. But I know it was it revolutionized um, gaming. Was all the. Grand Theft Auto, uh, the mm. Grand Theft Auto franchise. I don't. I just didn't get. I it. don't care for Grand Theft Auto either. I don't. Okay. Well, but Grand Theft Auto is re- Grand Theft Auto reinvented itself like twice, like because it reinvented itself yeah. with GTA when GTA Three came out, and then it reinvented itself again when GTA Five came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they, I know they are, they kind of were one of the early iterations of what it meant to be an open world game. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I have to be thankful that they're there. That's what kind of gave birth to like all these other amazing open world games. But just, I I don't know if I'll ever go and revisit the franchise. I know they're releasing what that trilogy or the three games for their anniversary, but 
Yeah. I mean, like, it's... It's for me. It's like it's the Final Fantasy VII syndrome again. It's like I understand what it did for gaming. I understand what it did for that genre, and like open worlds would be totally different than than what they would, you know, what they would have been without Grand Theft Auto, right? Like I feel like I feel like Grand Theft Auto did the open world game the way that nobody else did, but like you go back to those games and like super rough and it's it's back to like there's no universal control scheme right so like Mm -hmm. x is shoot and square is jump and you know left trigger is sprint like they're like they're still trying to figure out everything and like those are the types of things that like if they if they change some things with this new trilogy or whatever and it's getting decent reviews and stuff it's like okay maybe i'll give it a shot but like the best thing about those of those that trilogy of Grand Theft Auto games is Vice City soundtrack is like the only good thing about those games for me, <laughs> which is very good by the way. Remember that big box set they sold that was like forty discs? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, so they, good. They weren't they they weren't messing around with that soundtrack. No, see children before Spotify existed, we used to get music on these things called <laughs> CDs. Oh, yeah, man. Like, yeah, like music used to music used to exist on a physical platform. <laughs> yeah, before that, cassette tapes. Uh, uh, all right, our our last question here. This will be a quick one. Uh, what is your spiciest gaming hot take? Oh, Jesus. Ooh, spiciest gaming hot take. Oh my gosh, I think I've let enough of my hot takes out on these shows. Oh. Um, there are plenty hmm. of games that people like consider masterpieces that I just don't like. I just, I just don't like, like Bioshock is a game that I just don't like. The last of us is a game that I just don't like. Um, my, my spices, my spices game take, uh, game take is it's, it's, it's gotta be, it's, it's a toss up between, between is Mario Kart trash or is Kingdom Hearts trash? Uh, what? No. You shut your I, dirty mouth. I sir. feel like I have more affinity for Kingdom Hearts, even though, even though Stephanie, you and I supposed to be collabing on a Kingdom Hearts yep. broke my heart. I, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> editorial. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but man, Mario Kart, Mario Kart just makes my blood boil just thinking about it sometimes. <laughs> Man, Mario Kart 8 is like one of the it's like the most perfect racing game of all time. You want to be disinvited from my house, bring a copy of Mario Mario Kart in into my house. I will. I'll bring it. <laughs> uh Kingdom Hearts it'll though. Like, it'll it'll be like uh The Lost Boys when I was like you're no longer invited to my house. I removed my invitation and they and they flew out the door. <laughs> Kingdom Kingdom Hearts though is a series that's like Another, it's another series that was awesome at the time and didn't age well, right? Like even Kingdom Hearts three still feels like a, it feels like a well produced PS two game. You know, uh, as much as I love seeing Sora and the Disney characters, and as excited as I am that Sora's in Smash Brothers, uh, because I called it two years ago, and I'm very excited that I did that. I will never let that go. Uh, I think Kingdom Hearts is is one of those franchises that like is it's a hardcore fan game now, right? It's a game that's made for its fans and you know, that's about it at this point. You know, there's no easy jumping on point for Kingdom Hearts anymore. <laughs> so and, I will say this. Yeah, I I like me Mario Kart, but one of the major Nintendo franchises that I did like one iteration of it, and then after that, I just I don't know. I just thought it was overrated. This is all people are gonna start hating me now. I'm afraid to say it. I'm afraid Uh-oh. to say it. Oh. No, I'm just not the biggest fan of um, Super Smash Brothers. Is that bad? Hey, hey, hate it. hey, I don't. We can high five. We can high five. I don't. I mean. <laughs> I don't I think, think that's our, you and me isolated on an island. I don't. Our, our I don't think are, that's like. Our thoughts like, are one. I don't think that's the spiciest take, though. I think, like for me, I'm not the biggest fan of Smash Brothers either, 
But like, I think it's a, I think what it does, what it's doing, what especially ultimate is really important and really cool for, to bring all of these video game characters together in one space. And they created a game around it. That's like mind blowingly impossible. How, balance that game is oh yeah i would say since the one i originally like was the one from the n64 uh, but this recent one the ultimate like i do have a lot of respect for that because they're, they, you're right they are doing something that you don't really get to see it's kind of like a a nintendo gamers like fantasy to see all these types in, in under one game but i kind of more meant just like the hype it gets like every time it gets released on the next generation console like when it was on gamecube when it was on wii or whatever so like just in general not counting kind of what sakurai did this time and the reason why i was cringing and terrified of saying it is because and again i am a nintendo fan at heart i also know that nintendo fans can be very 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 fiercely protective Woo! of yeah their franchises oh yeah like i learned that lesson every week in the in the main chat <laughs> <laughs> i know so i'm sorry forgive me no I like I, actually 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 i feel like i feel like i, I dropped the mother of hot takes earlier this week yeah. uh what was we're just hot? uh we're, we're just we're just gonna talk about the naughtiness that happened around metroid but without actually like saying any any sources or anything like that you know yeah. uh but basically but basically i I feel like one of the things I try to do in all these conversations, I try to play devil's advocate. Like there's always there's always two mm-hmm. sides of it, and and whenever I see the pendulum swinging the most one way, I always try to like bring it back to, at least to the center yeah. for the most part. And ooh, well, boy, you I know. think I think that's something that as a group, you know, overall, I think we do pretty well is seeing both sides of it. Where like I think we see a lot of the video game industry kind of always lean one direction and never come back to the other side. The the video game, the video game industry, when it comes to the consumer side, like it's so polarized. Yeah. Like it's, it's real, it's real. Nobody's, nobody's willing to have the discussion or, you know, talk about different opinions or whatever. And I think that it's important that we do that, you know, and, and okay. So Stephanie doesn't like smash brothers. That doesn't make her a horrible person. You know what I mean? Yeah, it like, doesn't, doesn't make her or, a prime target. You yeah, know? or you it, know, it, it, it's not like it's not like you know Stephanie says she hates dog people or something. You know, do, you know dog dog lovers or something yeah. like that. You know, like it's just like, you know, how many times have I gotten hate for saying that I don't like The Last of Us? Right? Like I, sorry, I don't do like. Get, do you get hate though? Do you? I I used to like when when we when that game first like I would say uh-huh. when we were podcast when ed and i were podcasting with our old group and people would write in and message me like when we were talking about like games we popular games we don't like or whatever last of us always came up for me and it was like people would like tell me i shouldn't be talking about video games because uh, i didn't like the last of us and i'm sure from this episode this is what i just don't understand yeah sorry i don't want oh i was just gonna say i'm sure from this episode Someone's going to at least at least one or two people will DM me or tweet at me and say that. Right. Like, like, but I don't care. I'm not here to be. Oh, like, I'm, I'm not here it's for that. Lo- it's been a long time since, I, since I've done this, but I invite you guys to jump in my DMs. If you have something to say about this stuff, yeah. we will have a conversation. We, we will have a conversation if you want to have a conversation. But if you just want to sit there and, but then when, and argue, but, you know. but then when you call them out they'll block you and oh, yeah. they won't respond. Right. Like, and then you'll oh, get, yeah. you know, that's, I mean, that's just the nature of what, it's, what and, we're and doing. It's, the, it's, it's, and it's the cowardly part of gaming that always does that mm-hmm. crap or, you know, they do something or they do something really heinous. Like, you know, like they call on the, uh, they call in for a swatting, you know, because mm-hmm. they're getting their ass dogged out, you know, and CS go or something. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't need to have the same opinions as everybody else. And like, it's why I stopped listening to a lot of gaming podcasts. This is like, I'm just listening to the same opinions just with like different people behind it, you know? And it's like, I don't, I don't need this. I don't, I don't want this. I want like, I only listen to like two or three gaming podcasts now when I used to listen to probably like 20, you know, but it's just like, I, as I've been doing this and as I've met people, different people and, you know, made friends with different people, it's like, 
I want to have different conversations. I want to have new conversations. I want to have, you know, okay, Laron loves Monster Hunter, but doesn't like Ocarina of Time, right? Like, or, you know, doesn't think Ocarina of Time is like the greatest game ever. Who cares? Like, who cares? Let's, let's have a fun conversation about like we did tonight, you know? Oh, exactly. Oh, I mean, no one, oh, and, who's and to, by the way, a... sorry. No, no, I was, I was going to say, and by the way, like, you know, like, you know, like I, I like all other people, you know, like when, when, when we have something we dislike, you know, like sometimes our words can seem kind of harsh and stuff like that, but it's, but it's nothing personal. Unless I turn around and say, Stephanie, you are a stupid person for liking this or that, you know, like then you can take it personal. But you know, if all I said is, why do you like this game? Or I don't understand why you like this game. There's nothing to take personal about it. You know, (laughs) if anything, if anything, me asking the question, why gives you a chance to help me understand, you know? Yeah. But right. people don't always see it like that. People people don't see like the overture that you're making to start the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, like just the simple fact, Laurent, that you said you just didn't get into Ocarina of Time, and I openly said that is like my personal favorite game ever. Did the world end? No. 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 Nothing happened. <laughs> no, like God, like I've been playing Monster Hunter since it was since it was since it was basically a concept, and you know, like I don't really like I don't really give people a hard time because they they've either played it and didn't like it or they just don't want to play it. You know, I, I, I don't like you know I, I yeah. have my fun doing it. You know, and that's and that's what it is at the end of the day. If you have your fun doing something that somebody else doesn't like, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and like I I I mean, I think what's important too is like. We're, we all we've all come together because of our love of video games. But what makes us unique is the type of games that we play and the types of games that we like. And I think that that's what makes us as a whole unique. Is like we have a lot of different people involved with Boss Rush that are, you know, you know, Stephanie. You said you bought your first Xbox th- th- this year, right? Like, that's awesome. Like I've I've been playing Xbox since the the very first one, but like. I'm not going to call you like a poser or a hater because you bought your first one. I think that's exciting. I think the more people who play games and play what they want to play creates more unique conversations and better conversations. And, uh, you know, I know I hate on Leron for playing PC games all the time, but like Leron's really like our only PC I... guy. And I think he, you bring a unique perspective that way, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. I I like what we do here a lot. And it's real like even in, over the last 2 years it's really changed my perspective on like what people like about the video game industry right now and like what I think we want the video game industry to be and we're kind of taking and making our own path through there with, you know, these types of conversations too. Yeah, it kind of goes back. It kind of goes back to the to the tribalism in video games uh, mm-hmm. that I, that I brought up. You know, like you know, if you're if you're being a gatekeeper, the only thing you're the only thing you're hurting is yourself and your favorite franchise and or your favorite product, whether that's Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. That's when you when you gatekeeper, like you're actually hurting the product you love the most because instead of actually trying to expand horizons and stuff, or or if anything, like help perpetuating the sales of whatever you love, like all you're doing is turning pe- more and more people off to it with like the negativity and, and and you know the over the overabundance of criticism. You know, like people people there there are people that can take a lot of criticism before they hit a breaking point. There are some people that can't take any criticism at all, but normally, like you know, like. And the way you, and the way you, the way you basically frame anything, is the number one way to either help your thing flourish or help it die on the vine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, does anybody else have anything else to say about this topic? Uh, uh, leave it to Gal- leave it to Galatrad to, to bring a, a freaking passion. Oh topic no, this up. was this was this. Oh, it wasn't Galatrad? No, this was uh, Aaron Domingo's. Okay. Okay. So he, okay. he, oh, he tweeted oh, I thought, us. It, I because because Galatrad knows how to poke too. So I know I he does. This is what it is. <laughs> no, I know. I know he does. And it's fun. So, uh, thank you guys for writing in. Remember, you can tweet at us at Boss Rush Network or email us at Boss Rush Network at gmail I think that's gonna wrap this episode. Uh, Laron, Stephanie, I appreciate your time tonight. It was very fun. Oh, always a pleasure. We appreciate your time. Please get, feel better soon. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know. 
<laughs> Look, yeah. I don't, I don't have another, I don't have another show till Sunday, so it's fine. Hey, you, hey, you have, do you have to work tomorrow? I do. I have to work. Uh, I have to crap. Work. I was going, I was going to say, make yourself a hot tidy with like some of the strongest Jack <laughs> Daniels, some lemon, <laughs> some honey, and some ginger. No, I work, <laughs> I work Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So mm. I was going to say, take care of that voice. Um, I remember when I first started listening to Boss Rush, and I didn't put the faces to the name, but I remember like Corey's voice. I'm like, he has a good broadcaster's voice. I do. So mm. yeah, I was like, oh, that that guy sounds cool. So make sure you take yeah, care. That guys, I sound cool. Yeah, you sound cool. <laughs> remember, that's different than you are cool, but you sound cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Speak. Uh, this Speak. Is, uh, hey, yeah, hey, 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 this is always this is always a fun show. I, I enjoy it. I'm so I'm so glad it's back. I know, me too. I'm. I think we've finally found a good rhythm for this show. Yeah, and people people are liking people are liking hey, it. So, hey, have you noticed? The, have you noticed the trend of the podcast this week? Every every single podcast this week is at three people. I know. <laughs> I think. I mean, I think three people is kind of like a sweet spot. And like four, yeah. four is good, right? But I think like three people sometimes it's just like a good sweet spot. Yeah. So. Uh, anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. You can catch the show on Mondays on podcast services everywhere. If you listen on iTunes, remember to leave us a nice review and a five star rating. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a subscribe and a like and a share. Share with your friends. We would appreciate it. Stephanie, where can we find yes, you? We- you can find my work, my work, my uh, articles on BossRush.net, along with many other very talented writers, both in video games and entertainment. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author, where I am now tweeting out snapshots of Metroid Dread because that's all I like to do right now. <laughs> hey, keep them coming. <laughs> LaRon, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me everywhere as Exodus eight zero three E X O D U S eight zero three. That's my social media. So so Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Even though I don't TikTok, you know, uh, social media Exodus eight zero three is the one. Uh, my Twitch channel and also my YouTube channels Exodus eight zero three. Can't go wrong with that. And my gamer tag is Exodus eight zero three. So see, I got it all covered. Like it took me a long time to get it all under one umbrella because God, I had to fight for the YouTube one. <laughs> Oh, time. real quick. When do you think you'll be streaming um, Dead Space again? Because this time I want to actually check it out on my computer because when I tried streaming from my phone, that's when I had problems. Okay. Uh, I will probably be streaming. I'll probably be back to streaming it tomorrow because uh, because hell or high water, like I'm, I'm, I need to finish Metroid. <laughs> so, yeah, because uh, yeah, tomorrow is the 14th of October and I'm only in Chapter 3 of Dead Space 1. <laughs> so I, have a, I have a lot – it, it's going to move faster as soon as I get to Dead Space Two. I can tell you that right now. Like, because uh, Dead Space One is the game that just traumatized me out of, out of the entire trilogy. So, like, it's so like it, you can even see it. Like when I play, like I don't just like run everywhere. I just kind of like walk. Oh, a door opens, and I'll point the gun on him. <laughs> Yeah, but as soon as but you, it's, it'll be like a, 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 a switch has been flipped as soon as we get to Dead Space Two. All right. Uh, you can find me at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. You can find me on Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast, and uh, occasionally on Nintendo Power Block. So you can find all of our shows on BossRush.net, along with our reviews and articles and BossRush banter's and everything else. Please support our writing team; they're doing a fantastic job over on our website uh, bossrush.net I really appreciate all the hard work everybody's doing over there it really means a lot uh, so it means a lot that you guys listen to the show so I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening and until next week we love you goodbye take care Bye.